Hi, this is Dr. Kimberly Leonard, and you're listening to Incredible Life Creator. And today my guest is Terry Levine. So I'm going to read Terry's bio because she's had a very long um, career. Terry Levine is the founder of Heartpreneur and is a business and as an executive coaching expert. She assists businesses worldwide with business growth, sales, and marketing. She has more than 40 years of business experience, encompassing work with more than 5,000 business owners and entrepreneurs in a variety of industries. She is also a best-selling author of dozens of titles, has her own radio and TV show, and is also a keynote speaker. Terry has a passion for helping businesses to grow with her own personal experience gained while building multiple successful businesses from the ground up. Terry has created the Heartrepreneur Cause, teaching business owners to do business heart to heart. Thank you so much for being with us, Terry. I'm happy to be here. Thanks for having me. Yes, and when I think about 40 years, that's a long time to be in business. <laughs> when you said 40 years, I don't even feel like I'm 40. I'm like, how can that be? But yeah, yes, yes. So, and um, I, I just recently saw a post on Facebook of you, and you had, I think, $3 million on a table, and you were leaning up against it. I sure was, yeah. Yes, yes. Um, so... <laughs> And that's an awesome thing. <laughs> um, so, but everybody starts somewhere. So 40 years ago, you started somewhere. So tell me, how did you get to where you are? <laughs> a strange and interesting journey. I started as a speech language pathologist. I had a master's degree, came out of Ithaca College. I opened up my own speech pathology clinic. And shortly after I opened it, I realized I was great at marketing the clinic and I really wasn't as great as being a speech language pathologist. So I built it up. I added occupational therapy, physical therapy, went out and got hospital and nursing home contracts, later sold that business. And then I realized I had a formula for starting businesses. So I started an art consulting business, grew that, sold that, started a rehabilitation medicine business, grew that, um, sold that to my two partners. Then I, I spent five long years as president of a national healthcare company, really unhappy and realized I needed to get back into entrepreneurship. And about, well, almost 24 years ago, I left that to start my own coaching and consulting business. So this is only almost my 24th year. Oh my gosh. Yeah, <laughs> that, that's quite a journey. That's quite a journey. So you have a lot of experience and knowledge and through all those different, what, you didn't have a straight road. <laughs> no, I did not. I did not. And yet all of the things, you know, kind of tied together. I have sales background, a marketing, a business background. Um, I went on to get my PhD in clinical psychology and organizational behavior. So all of the pieces do fit together. Mm -hmm. And the expertise that was clear to me that I had is I know how to start businesses, take them to the multi-million dollar level. And if someone chooses to sell them, I certainly know how to do that. I'm now in the business that I'm at home in. I'm not planning mm -hmm. to start another business. <laughs> I love, love, you know, I do what I love and love what I do. That is great. Yes. Is along the way, along that whole journey, where there's times when there were failures, but later you found out that they actually led to successes. Do so, you know what I'm asking? Yeah, I do. And, and you know, most people I know, especially people who are, are earning three, four million a year like I am, have a story like that. Like, oh, you know, this happened and I lost everything or I was homeless. I actually am very fortunate. I don't have any stories like that mm -hmm. other than uh, the fact that about almost 15 years ago, instantaneously I uh, had a neurological disease. And that has been life-changing and has literally woken me up to living in the present and being fully in the present moment. So that's the biggest lesson that I've had and mm -hmm. why I, I now, as you know, 90% of my 
earnings go to a foundation for children that share the same neurological disease that I was gifted. <laughs> wow. And actually, I had a question now that we're on that topic is, um, you've been phenomenally successful, yet you were dealing with this disease for many, many years. So what are some, I don't know if I want to call it habits, rituals, what did you do to keep moving forward? Because obviously you've been moving forward, you've been writing book after book, <laughs> so you, you don't stop. So what self-care things or what? How did you do that? Thank you for asking. So being totally transparent as I am, um, when I first got this disease for 18 months, I was unable to get out of bed. I wasn't able to move. I wasn't able to have anyone touch me. Um, and during those 18 months, I really went into a, a major state of depression. And you know me, so you know I'm a happy, bubbly person. Well, I wasn't for 18 months. Um, and during those 18 months, I was fortunate that I had built up my business. There were other consultants. There were books and programs and products that sold because I was not in a place to really do a lot of coaching or consulting. I was on 29 medications a day, ketamine, which is elephant tranquilizer, infused. Mm -hmm and poured it into me. It was not a good time. And I became suicidal um, during those 18 months. And one day when I was writing a suicide note, planning to take my pills and say goodbye to the universe, I really uh, thought I wrote a suicide note and I wrote a book. It's <laughs> <laughs> oh, <wow. laughs> really a strange thing. And, and I it was like, what did I just write? And I instantly woke up to the fact that the pity party needed to end. And I started to work on standing up. The first time I stood up, it was three seconds, literally. Mm -hmm. And over the course of a year, eventually I was able to fully stand. So what changed for me and the lesson that I learned and I share with my client family members is everything comes from here, everything. And mm -hmm. when I was in this pity party, I was in it so deep that this part of me was just over and over recycling. Woe is me, poor me, I can't live like this, too much pain. Mm -hmm. And then instantly I woke up and said, Terry, there are children that have this same disease, reflex sympathetic dystrophy, the most painful disease known to the humankind. And I said, stop feeling sorry for yourself, go help other people. So the first thing I say to client family members is to learn a process that I teach called GID, gratitude, intentions, and delegations. And that's mm -hmm. what I do every day. I wake up in the morning, I'm grateful for every single thing I can think of. I set my intentions for the day, how I wanna feel, what I choose to experience. And I delegate all the how stuff that I can't figure out, like how's this gonna work? How's that gonna happen? I just delegate that to the universe and ask for help. And those things have been life-changing for me and have allowed me to really change my attitude and my mindset about RSD. And I've been moving forward ever since. Oh, thank you for sharing that. And um, I was just wondering the, the um, foundation that you have for the RSD, is there a way for um, people to support or contribute to that? Thank you for asking. There is, and we really need funds to help more children. And it's at Terry Levine Foundation for Children with RSD.org. Terry Levine Foundation for Children with RSD.org. And, uh, you know, even a donation literally of five to 10, 15 bucks really helps us help more kids. So it means the world to us. Okay, that's awesome. Thank you. And I'll make sure and put that in the notes at the bottom here when we're done so that people can find that. So, okay, where do I go from there? Um, <laughs> <laughs> so, um, was there a time in your life when you experienced an aha moment or realization moment? Um, yeah, you know, certainly there's been many of them. And um, one of the biggest ones for me happened, oh, probably like three or four years ago. Um, when I, I've done personal development since I'm 15 and I'm 61, that's a long time. I spent over $800,000 on personal development, including working with literally the biggest names in the industry. And I mean the biggest, I hired them directly. I didn't necessarily do their programs. And so I thought, 
you know, I got my personal stuff all together. Right? <laughs> <laughs> and then several years ago, I just had some memories from childhood that just started to flood back to me. And mm -hmm. I started to think, I wonder what it would be like if all of those programs from my childhood were gone. And so I spent the last few years really getting help in those areas. And some people have said, well, what do you need help for? And I'm like, ah, oh, there's still stuff. We all have stuff. Mm -hmm. And so shifting those programs has let me be a lot freer, let me feel more liberated and be able to be more authentic. So that was a huge shift for me to see hey, there's still more to work on. I think there's always more. <laughs> so yeah, I'm with you on that. <laughs> so um, who have been the people that you feel like have helped you the most and, and how was it that they helped you? So the first uh, person that helped me was my first dearest mentor. Her name is Eileen Seed. And she helped me really create the art business that I created learned how to coach and consult from her. And this is, you know, like in 1982 when nobody was really coaching per se. Um, she used to spend three, four, five hours at a time on the phone helping me and just made a world of difference and helped me go on to earn literally my first few million dollars. The second person who I've also shared with you and you know is Brian Ridgway. Mm -hmm. He has been such a huge influence in my life. Brian and I have been friends for about four and a half years. And it's been a life-changing experience in working with someone who sees the universe in, in a way where we're all one, we're all three, we're all interconnected, we're infinite, unlimited beings. Mm -hmm. um, and Brian has been a huge mentor and friend in my life. Yes, and recently I actually had my first session with him and things started changing immediately. <laughs> I mean, immediately. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, I'll have to put his link down there too <laughs> at the bottom. <laughs> so, um, but yeah, very life changing the work that he does. Yes. So, um, and I know you've written so many books. Are there any books besides your own that you would recommend that people read? It's like, oh, before you die, read this book. You know, if you're in business, the book that has been like my business Bible and I ask all my client family members to read when they start with me is The E-Myth or The E-Myth Revisited by Michael Gerber. It is such a great book for any entrepreneur. It really helps you shift what you need to be doing from the inside out. So that's like my number one business resource go-to book of all times. Uh, for the females, my favorite book is Women Who Run With Wolves. Um, it has these just amazing archetypal stories that uh, they just have touched my heart and made a huge difference for me personally. So they're my two go-to books on my bookshelf that I pick up pretty regularly. Awesome. Thank you. So, um, so tell me a little bit about what you're doing now, The Heartrepreneur. Mm, thank you for asking. So I was in the middle of writing a book about five or six years ago for one of my publishers, and it was uh, all about business. And I live in the Philly area. He had me go to New York, and we were having a, a big strategy meeting. And into the meeting, all of a sudden, he goes, oh, I don't want this book. And I was like, <laughs> contract, like I was very strange. And he said, no, he goes, I've known you for a lot of years. I want you to write a book about being a heart entrepreneur. And I remember saying to him, a heart or what? <laughs> <laughs> He said, what I love about you, Terry, is that you do business in such an authentic, heartfelt way. People need that. So I went back home to Philly. It's like a three hours with traffic to get back home. And I kept processing this idea. And by the time I got here, it landed for me so much so that I changed the name of my company. We changed our branding. I trademarked uh, and registered the word Heartrepreneur and decided that the rest of my business life, I would be focused on creating a cause of people doing business heart to heart, authentically, transparently, and in integrity, whether it's with their prospective client family members, their current client family members, their vendors, their partners, um, whether it's their employees or their contractors. And I am really on a mission of, to reach more than a thousand people a year and transform their businesses in this way. Wow. So 
when you look at business, why are so many businesses failing today? It's really sad that so many are. The first reason is people go into business and are completely undercapitalized. Uh, they just don't have enough money. And I tell people that come to me, I'm very truthful. So if somebody asks me for business advice, we don't sell them our products or services, we analyze them. And there's a lot of people that we say, you know what? We hear your passion. It's not something you're gonna turn into profits. Get a job, stay with a job. Being an entrepreneur is not for everyone. And unless you have the capital, you won't succeed. I've talked to people who say, I have $500, I'd like to start a business. And I say, don't waste your time or your money. Um, I really mean that. I'm just being honest. That's the number one reason people go out of business. The number two reason is that they really don't have any idea how to do sales and marketing. They just think, well, I'll go on social media and people will find me. And it's not like that. You need to understand sales and marketing. And it's not copycat sales and marketing. Don't just get a ClickFunnels account because everybody else has one. Um, don't follow what everyone's doing because the truth is most people are really not successful. So get a mentor find a mentor that has been there, done that, that is running faster and further and more furiously than you. Uh, I mentioned all over Facebook, Joel Bauer has been my mentor now for, we're going on year 15. And that is because every year he literally puts a minimum of an extra million dollars in my pocket. Find a mentor who can do that for you. Okay. Wow. And um, so what are some tips for business success? Ah, oh, that's a good question now. Now I get to talk about the fun stuff. Yeah. Um, so the first thing I will tell you is don't be a copycat. People are looking for people who are original. If your website and your social media profile and everything else about you looks like everybody else, you won't get chosen. Then people are just choosing the lowest priced person and you really wanna be, in my experience, the highest price. When I wrote Turbocharge and Turbocharge Your Business, I actually gave the formula for how to be the top person in your niche and command the highest prices. And the formula works. It works for all my clients and for me. So the first thing to do is be an original. And you do that by creating what I call a core unique positioning statement. And that is a statement that no one else could say that separates you from everyone else and allows you not to be a cookie cutter. And the second business tip I'll give you is decide, do you wanna be like a Nordstrom's or do you wanna be a Walmart? And the clients that I work with wanna be Nordstrom's. They wanna be top in their industry and receive top dollar. And the final tip is, I don't care what your product or service is, put a guarantee behind it. Because if you can't stand behind your products or services, I really don't think you should be in business. So those are my three best tips. Thank you. That is awesome. Um, and what are some ways to turbocharge, rev up <laughs> your business? So the, the tips that I give in both of the turbocharge books, turbocharge your business and turbocharge um, are truly very similar, yet there's nuances to them. So the very first thing that I say to people is, you have to understand that whatever business you're in, you're really in the business of sales and marketing. So if you think you're a chiropractor, a coach, a high ticket closer, whatever, you're none of those. You're in the business of marketing chiropractic, marketing coaching, marketing, whatever it is you do. Always be marketing. You have to be marketing all the time. Now, when I started uh, 23 something years ago, I have 30 clients in 30 days with a waiting list and I've never looked back, yet I'm always marketing, even when I couldn't squeeze another person in. So people go, well, why do I always have to be marketing? Well, to turbocharge your business, you literally constantly have more prospects than you can handle because their business is cyclical and there are times when all of a sudden, for whatever reason, five clients decide they're not gonna work with you, they're gonna do something else, whatever it is, mm -hmm. you instantly wanna have five people instantly, the next one. <laughs> Ready to go. <laughs> you start to rev up by having that constant lead generating mechanism and the way I teach mm -hmm. it is through an automated webinar. Yes, and Terry, sometimes I wonder if you even sleep <laughs> You are on social media so much. You're writing books, you're on social media, you're teaching, you're coaching, and then you're speaking with Joel Bauer and other people that we all know. <laughs> and I think to myself, when does she sleep? 
<laughs> so I'll share two things. Number one, I actually don't require a lot of sleep. Some people do. I'm good on four to five hours a day. Um, and that's what I typically have had my whole life. So that's number one. And number two is there's a whole team of people behind me. So sometimes I'm very transparent. I'm not always the one on social media. Um, I'm not always the one doing a lot of the activities. I am actually doing a lot less than it looks like. And that's another secret to turbocharging your business. Do what you're brilliant at and find a team that can do everything else. Yes, yes. I noticed that I was listening to your podcast and I said, oh, this doesn't sound like Terry. And it's one of your team members sure. doing the interview. So, so that's, I've heard that you need to delegate and that sounds like that's working for you. Um, what, do you what advice do you have if someone's just starting out? You said capital, yeah. but what else? So the other thing is get a mentor. I, and, and really, you know, this is what I think. If you, if you pretend that you know what you're doing, um, you're going to probably spend 20 or 30 years really figuring out formula formulaically how to create six or seven figures. And that's a lot of time wasted, a lot of money spent and energy. So just cut right to the chase, get a mentor, get a business strategist, a business consultant. The other thing that I would say is don't spend time doing the things most business owners do. You don't need a logo. You don't need uh, to sit at home and creating business cards. Most people are hiding behind their computers. And I, I will share, I can't use names, but I, I have two clients who are probably two of the most famous internet marketers. One that's worked with me for over 20 years, one for about six. And they're literally the two, I would say, most famous names in internet marketing. They do a lot of their marketing, not through the internet. We're doing a lot of their marketing with in-person seminars, radio show, TV appearances, newspaper articles, magazines, and as well as in public face-to-face -face networking. So you can stay at home and hide behind your computer and stop wasting your time making flyers and logos and thinking you need a brand. Just get out there and talk to people about what you do and offer your help. Okay, thank you. That's awesome. And that sounds a lot more exciting than sitting behind the computer yeah, <laughs> all by yourself. Far better results and you won't be as lonely. <laughs> yes, yes. And um, I had a kind of a different question for you. You know, you've, um, I hear that you're most like the five people you hang around with the most. Um, you know, so you have so many people around you. You're connected with so many people. You've been very successful. How do you choose your friends? How do you choose those five people? Wow, I've never had anyone ask that. That's a brilliant question. I agree with you are going to represent the five people around you. So if you're with five people who are earning a lot of money, most likely you are. If you're with five very conscious spiritual people, most likely you are. So I have had to do a lot of things over the past years. One, I had to say goodbye to a lot of people that really were energy drains um, subconsciously mm -hmm. that just really weren't lifting me up in the world. I've also kept a lot of people more as acquaintances. And I chose the five people by choose, choosing five different people, choosing one person who earning wise and knowledge wise is way, way, way above me. So let me hang with that person mm -hmm. to be my financial person. Mm -hmm. Let me hang with someone who's more conscious, more present than me to bring the spiritual aspect more into me. Let me hang with somebody who has the best sense of humor and brings the most joy out for me and other people so I can do more of that. So I chose, and I won't give you the other two, but it's very similar. I chose five different people for five different traits that I really wanted to have in my life. And by the way, that circle of five, they literally have my back all the time and I have their back all the time. That's amazing and wonderful because that's, that's all anyone can ask for is to have someone love you, behind you, supporting you. Yeah. The most important thing in my world is knowing that there are people in my world who have my back and that there are people who I would literally do anything for and I feel the same way about. I posted something on Facebook yesterday that a friend said to me, we've been childhood friends since ninth grade. Mm -hmm. and yesterday he said something along these lines that, 
having a friend who really has your back and really loves you can be just as important as having a lover. And it was so touching to hear someone say that mm -hmm. and uh, know that I've been that kind of friend in someone's life and I have friends like that in my own. Wow. That is really amazing. And I have one more kind of personal question. So as busy as you stay, even though I hear you don't sleep that much, <laughs> How do you balance that with your married life? And, you know, how does that, you know, I'm sure a lot of business women, they're a little bit worried about, you know, how their husband's going to react to what they're doing. Mm, yeah. So I'm very blessed in that way. So uh, just celebrated our 40th wedding anniversary a month and a half ago. And wow, I'm congratulations. Just, <laughs> yeah, I'm super blessed. I have a husband who also is okay standing behind me. And it's funny because when we're taking the photo of me in front of the representation of the $3 million, um, my husband just got over me and was like behind me looking at the money. And I said, shoot that picture because that is my husband. Mm -hmm. He's behind me, he's cheerleading me, he's rooting me on. And what I do when I make sure that I do is also notice how much time I'm spending in business and focus on how much time I want to spend in my marriage. My marriage comes first. My, my family is number one. My client family members are number two. And so we have date nights. We have weekends where I actually don't work. Um, I stop working in the evening and we spend our, most of our evenings together. So when we're together, we have really connected quality time. We just like to sit and cuddle and hug. That's just... Aww, <laughs> <laughs> and when I'm working, he knows I am like in the moment into work. And, you know, if, if he walked in right now and saw me in the middle of this, he would give me a kiss on the head and he would just exit. And so mm -hmm. have a good blend. And I, I tell every woman in business or a man in business, if you have a partner, you need to make sure that you're dedicating quality time to your partner first. You can still grow a business Growing a business should just be an extension of who you are. Don't give your whole life over to your business or you're a wage slave once again. Yeah. Oh, thank you so much. So what is it that you're working on now? What are you excited about at this moment? New programs, books, uh, what's coming up? <laughs> share. I'm so excited. Yes. I have two books coming out in, in the next couple of months, which is really rare. Normally I have I saying, two at a time. <laughs> it's, crazy. it's really, hard. I normally have one book, you know, a year and um, my publisher has decided to release two within literally a couple of months. So the next one that'll be out probably in about 30 days or so is turbocharge your business for female entrepreneurs. And uh, it's very different than my other turbocharge books. Um, a lot of my client family members are females mm -hmm. and I've helped them grow their businesses a little bit different than I help men. And then they asked me to put the process together. So that's going to come out soon. Mm -hmm. And the one that I'm, I'm excited about and a little nervous about is called About to Break, The Path to True Forgiveness, which comes out on Black Friday. Mm -hmm. And the reason I'm a little apprehensive is that is an autobiography. And there's things <sighs> Yes. No one knows, including my husband, literally, I'm sharing you know, my deepest feelings and the things that have happened to me since I can recall as a very young child. And uh, it's, it's quite emotional. It took me three years to write that book. And I'm excited about sharing the forgiveness process with others because I think it will help. And yet, you know, not so sure how people will receive my story. Yes, that is very authentic and raw. And <laughs> yes. Yes. Understanding. Yeah, it is. Well, and thank you for be will being willing to do that. That is just, oh. I, you know, Terry, I have always felt a connection with you from the moment I met you. We met at CEO Space. From the moment I met you, I just felt your heart and felt you. And even though I didn't even know you that well, I'm like, oh, I, I love this lady. <laughs> Your the feeling is mutual. I know you know so, that. Yes. Yeah, so thank you so much. And thank you for being so authentic and so open because um, people need that these days. And 
And so many of us are going through struggles or going through things or we've had things happen in our lives and we think we're the only one. But when one person shares, then, oh, then you feel like, oh, you have some, somehow it's like a support. It's a relief. So it is. And we really are all interconnected. I just, I don't see separation. You know, we're all the same. We have the same makeup in our DNA. And if I can share my story and someone gets helped by that story, that's what I'm here for. Mm -hmm. Well, thank you so much. I have so enjoyed having you on the podcast and just thank you for all you give. Thank you for all the love you show people. Not only do you show them just love and connection, but you show them actually how to be abundant. And, and then you have your foundation for, you know, the kids. And, oh, I just thank you so much. And I'm so thankful to have you here on this planet. And I'm so thankful that I can call you friend. Absolutely. And um, I wish you the best as you continue in your journey. And I love you very much. I love you too. And thanks for doing this podcast. You're awesome. Thanks. All right. We'll see you next time. Okay. Thanks.